Linux Mint 22.2, codenamed Zara, is here. This release brings updated software, a modern font, pipe wire for smoother audio, and a lot of subtle refinements to polish the desktop. But like every version, there are a few things you should know before you install. Let's dive in. Before we get into what's new, let's take a quick look back at Mint's journey. Mint began in 2006, built on Ubuntu with one clear mission to make Linux simple, elegant, and beginner-friendly. Over time, it became the go-to distro for Windows switchers thanks to its familiar interface, out-of-the-box multimedia support, and that iconic mint green style. From early releases like Barbara and Cassandra to milestone versions like Maya and Sarah, Mint built its reputation on stability, usability, and listening to community feedback. The Cinnamon desktop itself was born here, reshaping how modern Linux desktops look and feel. Fast forward to today, we're at Linux Mint 22.2 Zara. It's a long-term support release supported until 2029 and continues the legacy, refining the experience, modernizing the look, and keeping Linux welcoming for everyone. To get a taste of what's cooking in the Linux world, let's head straight to DistroWatch. And here it is, the release info for Linux Mint 22.2 Beta, codenamed Zara. While the ISO is downloading in the background, we'll hop over to the official Mint blog. That's where you'll find everything you need, the release announcement, a list of new features, upgrade and installation instructions, release notes, and even the known issues and bug fixes. Once that's done, we'll move on to the fun part, booting into Mint 22.2, taking a tour of what's new, and checking out all the little improvements that make this release feel more polished. So let's dive in. Oh, I forgot to mention there was some instruction about the virtual machine install, and we are going to follow it on our VM installation of Mint. It says increase the video memory to 128 MB and set the graphics controller to VMSVGA, done, so let's begin installing. After downloading the Linux Mint 22.2 ISO, we boot our system or virtual machine from it. The first screen we see is the bootloader menu. Here you can choose to start Linux Mint, run it in compatibility mode, or check the integrity of the medium. By default, just hit enter to start the live session. A few moments later, you're greeted by the Linux Mint desktop environment. This is a live session, which means the system is running entirely from the ISO, nothing is installed to your hard drive yet. You can explore the desktop, test your hardware, and make sure everything works before committing. On the desktop, there's a clear Install Linux Mint icon. Clicking this launches the Calamari Installer, the tool Mint uses to guide you through setup in a simple, step-by-step -step manner. And here is the well-known Calamari Installer. On the welcome screen, choose your preferred language for installation. This will also set the language for your installed system. Next, pick your region and time zone on the map. This ensures your clock and system locale are correct. Select your keyboard layout. You can test it in the box provided to make sure keys work as expected. Now we are on the partitioning page. This is where you decide how Mint will be installed on your disk. If you want to erase the whole drive, choose Erase Disk. If you prefer more control, pick Manual Partitioning where you can set root slash, home home and swap partitions yourself. Mint also supports encryption and LVM if you need them. Now we will create our user account, enter name and username. Then choose a computer name, this identifies your machine on a network. I'll right now set a strong password and decide if you want to log in automatically or require a password each time. Once you click Install, Mint begins copying files to your hard drive. You'll see a progress bar and some slideshow screens showcasing Mint's features. This usually takes a few minutes depending on your hardware. When installation completes, you'll be prompted to either restart now or continue using the live session. If you restart, don't forget to remove the ISO from your boot device so the system boots from your new Mint installation. On reboot, you'll land at the Mint login screen. Enter your password and welcome to your brand new Linux Mint 22.2 desktop, fully installed and ready to use. Now when we are inside the installed Mint 22.2, let's look at the real improvements inside Zara. On the surface, there doesn't seem to be much changes, so let's dive deep. Sticky Notes, a handy tool, just got a nice visual refresh. They now feature rounded corners and look a lot cleaner on the desktop. They're also Wayland compatible, so no matter which session you're running, sticky notes will work smoothly. 
On the technical side, a new debus method was added, which basically allows the notes to reload properly in the background. But here's the cool part, there's now an Android companion app called Steinsy Notes, created by Graham Bygrave. You can grab it on F-Droid, and it lets you sync your notes between Linux Mint and your Android phone. Super handy if you jot things down on the go and want them instantly on your desktop. The login screen has also been refreshed. It now features a blur effect on both the panel and the dialog box, giving it a modern, polished look. On top of that, there's support for user avatars, so your account can feel a little more personal right from the login screen. Mint's IPTV player, Hypnotix, has some great new upgrades. In addition to full screen, it now supports two new viewing modes. Theater mode, this hides all the controls and menus, so your show completely fills the window. Borderless mode, this goes even further, hiding the title bar and window borders. You can still move the window by holding Alt and dragging with your mouse, which makes it perfect if you like tiling windows or snapping them to the side. Hypnotix has also been tuned for better performance. It launches faster, searches are snappier when dealing with big playlists, and playback is smoother. On top of that, the session now stays active while you're watching, and the volume no longer resets when switching channels. Fingwet, the big new feature. The most talked about addition in Linux Mint 22.2 is a brand new X app called Fingwet. This app brings fingerprint authentication to Mint. If your laptop or desktop has a fingerprint reader, Fingwit will detect it and let you register your fingerprints. Once set up, you can use your fingerprint to unlock the screensaver, as well as authorize pseudo commands, and open administrative apps. Now here's an important note. If you use home directory encryption or a keyring, the login screen will still need your password. But if you don't use those, you can even configure Fingwit to handle login authentication too, just like on a smartphone. This makes logging in and running admin tasks a lot more convenient, while still keeping everything secure. Linux Mint 22.2 also takes a big step forward in theme compatibility. Normally, apps built with Libidweta ignore your system theme and stick out like a sore thumb. But in this release, Mint patched Libidweta so it now works properly with themes. That means Mint's own themes, MintY, Mintex, and Mintel all apply consistently, even to Libidweta apps. You'll notice this in apps like GNOME Calendar, Simple Scan, and Disk Usage Analyzer, which now blend in beautifully with the rest of your desktop. On top of that, Mint now supports accent colors. Flatpak apps built with Libid Weta can automatically pick up your chosen GTK accent color, whether you're on Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE. So if your theme has a defined accent, buttons, highlights, and details in those apps will follow it. To prepare for the future, the Mint team even created a new library called LibAdapta. Think of it as Libidweta, but with theme support and a few extras for developers. The idea is simple. Apps look the same by default, but if your desktop supports theming, they'll respect it. This ensures a consistent, polished look across the board, no matter which apps you're using. Mint's core apps, known as XApps, also see some nice upgrades in 22.2. In XViewer, the EDID-based color correction is now optional and turned off by default. This avoids conflicts with the color settings already handled by your hardware and desktop also. A brand new thumbnailer has been added for AIFF audio files, so cover art now shows up properly. And the good old Warpinator Mint's file sharing app is expanding its reach. There's now an iOS version, so you can send files between Linux and iPhones with ease. Even the web app manager is more flexible, you can now edit the description field of your web apps, and for those working with lots of files, the bulk renamer just got smarter. You can add leading zeros, choose where numbering starts, set the step size, and it even remembers your last renaming operation for convenience. All of these are small touches, but together they make Mint's native apps more polished and user-friendly. The MintY theme also got a subtle refresh in this release. The grays now have a slight hint of blue, which is a common design trick used across modern UIs. The result is that the theme looks more modern, softer, and less harsh, especially in the dark mode where panels and cinnamon elements feel much smoother. Another bonus, these tweaks also help Mint's theme blend better with Flatpak Libidweta apps, since they now use very similar colors. It's a small change, but it makes the desktop look cleaner and more polished overall. The software manager now greets you with a cleaner welcome screen, 
and it even includes a help section that explains the difference between Flatpak apps and system packages, something many new users often get confused about. Flatpaks are containerized applications that come bundled with their own dependencies, so they tend to be larger but work consistently across different Linux distributions. System packages, on the other hand, are installed from Mint's own repositories and are usually lighter, faster, and more integrated with the desktop. By pointing out these differences directly inside the software manager, Mint makes it easier for beginners to make the right choice when installing apps. The update manager has also been improved. Whenever an update requires a restart, it now shows a dedicated reboot button to save you a step. And if you're using the Mate Edition, you'll notice that the application menu search is more accurate, making it quicker and easier to find what you need. Linux Mint 22.2 is powered by the brand new Linux kernel 6.14 and built on top of the Ubuntu 24.04 Noble package base. That means you get the latest hardware support, security updates, and a solid foundation to run your desktop on. As for Mint's long-term support strategy, this release will receive updates and security patches all the way until 2029. For the next couple of years, up until 2026, every new version of Mint will stick to the same package base, which makes upgrades between releases simple and worry-free. During that time, the Mint team won't be switching to a new base. Instead, they'll focus entirely on polishing and improving the experience on top of Noble. And that's a wrap on our look at Linux Mint 22.2 Zara. It's not a flashy release, but the polish, refinements, and new tools really show how Mint keeps improving with every version. Now I'd love to hear from you what's the first thing you noticed in the new Mint? Was it the login blur, the fingerprint tool, or maybe those subtle theme tweaks? Drop your thoughts down in the comments, I'll be checking them out. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss more Linux news, reviews, and tutorials coming your way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.